lock granularity. When you're implementing a database management system, it can be hard to decide what granularity of object you should be locking in your lock manager. Should you lock tuples or pages or tables? What about if you lock the entire database as the object to lock? Well, that's clearly not a good idea because then you would have serial execution of all your transactions, right? So we know that we want something finer grained than the database itself. But what is the right granularity to choose? Well, there's a trade-off. Let's think about it. Um, we kind of like a fine-grained availability of resources, like a lock per tuple, because that would allow higher concurrency. It would allow uh, me to run a transaction on one tuple while you run a transaction on another tuple in the same table, for example. Okay? But the thing is that that might generate a lot of locks. Think about scanning a table with a million tuples. Okay, select star from table. That's going to force you to issue a lock for every single tuple in the table. That's millions of locks. And lots of locks means lots of memory in the lock table and also a lot of calls to the lock manager to issue those locks. And so that's going to use up CPU cost. And so a small number of locks to be managed would be nice would be nice as well. So we'd really kind of like locks at a coarse granularity, like maybe a table level. Well, we can't have it both ways, or can we? So Jim Gray, very early on in the development of transactions, came up with the idea of multiple granularity locking, that you shouldn't have to make the same decision for all transactions, that different transactions can set locks at different granularities. We can allow data items to be of various sizes, tables, pages, tuples, and so on. And we can define a hierarchy of data granularities with smaller objects nested inside of larger objects. You can represent this graphically as a tree. Okay, so imagine these data containers that are nested. So at the top, we have a database. Inside the database, we might have some uh, finer grained things like tables. And inside the tables, we might have some pages. Inside the pages, we might have some records and so on. And when a transaction locks some node in this tree explicitly, it implicitly locks all the nodes descendants in the same mode. So if you were to get a shared lock on T1, you would implicitly have a shared lock on all the objects below T1. Now we can have the granularity that we might want at any given time. Fine granularity, lower in the tree, is going to give you higher concurrency, but more locks. And so you only want to use this when you're locking a few things down there in the bottom of the tree. Coarse granularity is when you lock things higher up in the tree. So you set fewer locks, which is lower overhead in the lock manager. But of course, you're preventing concurrency down below that granularity if you don't need everything locked underneath that node. And so then we can fit this trade-off now according to the axis patterns of our transactions.